By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an X Points old school finals, finals number 16 to be precise. And this is going to be uh, between two very powerful decks. We've got Panza Disco, so that's land destruction with the Troll Disco, a mix of those two strategies against a workshop deck. Exactly, we finally have a workshop deck in the finals. And maybe you're wondering, okay, what does that all mean? Let me first show you this... Um, this graphic here, because here we can see the points system. So X, X points means that you've got 10 points to spend on these very powerful cards that you see here before you. So for example, if you choose to play with the Library of Alexandria, you've already spent four points and you can spend six more points. Now, as you can see, um, the Mishra's Workshop is one point in the current system. So if you want to play with all four Mishra's Workshops, it means you spent four points and you've got six points left. Now, um, th this is just one part of the rule set because you've got the X points point system and then you've got the rule set. So those are two uh, different things. And the rule set is Atlantic. And Atlantic means that you can play with four Workshops, uh, only one strip mine though, and that you can also play with Fallen Empires, right? So if you want to know more about the ins and outs of the rules, please check the description below because there I have some more information and some useful links for you. For example, in Swedish Old School Magic, you cannot play with four workshops, only with one workshop. And Atlantic also allows you, um, also works with Mana Burn, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so just this was just a little bit of information about the rules in, and in case you're confused, don't worry, because there are almost as many rules as there are players, so it's quite normal. But bottom line is, everybody is trying to find the perfect rule set that works out for them. And, you know, we just get a lot of interesting old school matches, like the one today. So uh, I haven't really mentioned the name of the players yet. So Felix is playing on the uh, Disco Troll Ponza strategy, and Michael is a player who's playing with four workshops. Now, before I go to the deck deck, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can skip this introduction, you can skip the deck deck section, go straight to the finals. The best way to do that is by checking the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, and that will take you straight to the action. As for now, we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of uh, Felix, and that is Disco Ponza. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Felix. So this is Ponza Disco. And Ponza kind of refers to a deck strategy that's all about land removal. And we definitely see that part in the deck of Felix here as well. He's got four sinkhole, four stone rain, four ice storm. So a lot of land removal that he wants to use to kind of win the tempo game, right? Getting yourself ahead in mana means that you probably get to cast the bigger spells. You get a you get a, um, a head on board. You can deal more damage or just quicker, just ahead of the game. And I think what he wants to do ideally is get a Birds of Paradise turn one or a Mox out, and then turn two start destroying some lands. Even with a Mox Jet, there could be a scenario that he can play a Sinkhole as early as turn one. You know that will be pretty brutal. Then uh, there's the second part of his deck that refers to the Disco part. So Disco Troll. He's playing with four Setch Trolls and four Nevenerals Discs. So Nevenerals Disc, super powerful artifact, right? Four to cast, comes into play tapped. You can untap it, pay one, sacrifice it, destroys all creatures, uh, in, in shamans and artifacts, of course. So this is a super good card. And remember, it destroys it, meaning you can still regenerate. And that's where the Setch Troll comes in. Setch Troll, one red and two to cast for two, two creature that gets a plus one, plus one bonus if you control a swamp. So then it becomes a three, three. And also for one black, you can regenerate it. So what you can do is you can pop the disc, regenerate your troll so your opponent loses all the creatures you keep your trolls and you can start swinging in with them uh, also the neverno's disc works together really well with the mistress factories mistress factory uh, just a land but for one you can uh, make it into a 2-2 assembly worker and of course when you pop the disc you make sure there's still lands after the whole disc has been resolved you can animate your Mishra's factories and you can start attacking with them. So that works quite well. What I also like, of course, uh, in this strategy or the four Hypnotic Spectres, because if you keep your opponent low on lands, it means that he cannot play play out any cards from his hand, it means he has a full hand. And that's where the Hypnotic Spectre comes in to kind of force the opponent to start discarding some spells. Now, I do think that in this matchup against Michael, it is going to be very tough for him because Michael, his deck can go so fast with those uh, Mishra's workshops that I wonder if Michael, or sorry, if Felix will be able to go fast enough to keep up the pace with Michael, because if Michael can take over the tempo play, he's probably going to win it, right? So, and also the Abyss is a very good card against this deck. So I wonder how Felix is going to do. 
I think he needs he needs some luck to win this from Michael. Uh, talking about Michael, let's take a look at his shops deck. And here we see the deck of Michael. So when a deck has four workshops, you basically call it a shops deck, right? That's where the term comes from. Uh, Mishra's workshop, of course, is the key factor in this deck. Um, it's a land from antiquity, so you can tap it to add three colorless mana to your mana pool, and you can only spend those mana to cast artifacts, right? So there is a limitation to it, but oh boy, this card is insane. And in Atlantic, you can play with four of these cards, and X points, they're worth one point each, so by playing four of these shops, he spent four points, right? So he's also spent four points on uh, Mishra's Factory, so that's eight points. And then the Abyss is also a point, so that's 10 points in total. So you can just play this deck within those 10 points margin. And for me, that makes this the perfect X points deck. So I'm kind of surprised that it took so long to appear in the finals. Now, of course, I haven't uh, done every single X points finals. I haven't seen every single X points tournament. So this is purely based on what I've seen here on Timmy Talks. But I would have expected to see this deck much sooner. Also, because Copy Artifact has no points. Uh, Triskelion has no points. Uh, Swords of Plowshares has no points. Uh, Ice Manipulator has no points. So for me, it's it's like it's kind of the ideal setting to to make this deck work. So I'm really curious, Michael, if I'm right and if you're going to be as dominant as I think you're going to be because I've been wrong before. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm by no means this all-knowing dude. And I know very little about shops decks because of the simple reason that um, I play mainly Swedish old school magic where you can only play with one Mishra's Workshop. And in those... Uh, decks that play the Mishra's Workshops, we tend to call those decks robots decks, which is very similar to what we're seeing here, of course. So let me just first kind of focus on what this deck wants to do. So it plays out the Mishra's Workshops early in the game, allowing you to have a turn to Suchi or Juggernaut, or sometimes when you're lucky, even a turn to uh, Tetravus or Triskelion. Now, these are your key creatures, right? When you get these bigger creatures out, especially the Triskelion, uh, 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 six to cast for a one one with three plus one plus one counters so basically you're four four and those counters you can take off the trike to deal one damage to any target that's what what makes it so good uh, you can copy those with your copy artifact copy artifact is just insanely strong in this deck because there's so many good targets one blue and one for a blue enchantment that when it comes into play you choose an artifact that it copies and it takes over that entire artifact including color so with copy artifact you can make a lot of cheap trikes so you have a whole army of trikes you can start attacking with that and if you don't have the trike out there are a lot of other really good targets tetravis you know if you don't have the right mana base or not enough mana, I should say. You can have your Suchi or your Juggernaut or even cooler, your Clay Statue. I think it's super cool, Michael, that you're playing with Clay Statue, by the way. A 3-1 creature from Antiquities, 2 mana to regenerate is fantastic. And if you cannot or do not want to copy an artifact creature, you also have those four Icy Manipulators that are insanely strong. I play with them a lot. They're super flexible and they're so annoying to play against because I've done that a lot as well. So four to play, one and one and tap to use and it taps down a land, an artifact or a creature. So you can choose. It's it's phenomenal in my opinion. Um, and then he also has a Chaos Orb. What if he has a Chaos Orb out and he draws into his copy artifacts? He can have multiple Chaos Orbs on the board. It's insane, right? And to kind of top that off of this already strong deck, he's playing with the Abyss. One black and three to cast for this enchant world that says during your upkeep, destroy, or, or was it sacrifice? Anyway, uh, a, a non-artifact creature. So as you can see, Michael's only playing with artifact creatures. So for him, the abyss does nothing. But for his opponent, Felix, he's playing Sedge, he's playing Hippie. For him, it could be a big problem. Now he is playing with a little white splash. So he does have two disenchants, I believe. So that's something. Um, and of course, he's got the Nevenerals discs that he can use to blow it up. Now... What's really interesting is that, you know, Michael is not playing Disenchant's main. He's playing Disenchant's sideboard. So after game one, he's probably going to board into Disenchant's if, of course, he sees the discs. And then let me think in game. Oh, wait, the sideboard of Felix also has Shatterstorms in there. That could be a game changer. Anyway, um, it's going to be super interesting to watch game one. But to see what's going to happen in game two, that's going to be really really interesting anyway uh we've looked at the deck of michael we've discussed the deck of felix as well that means we're ready let's go to the finals of x points number 16. game number one here we go michael on the play starting with a mistress factory he's on the shops deck and felix is on the uh disco troll ponza strategy starting with a birds of paradise this is what he wants to do so i am expecting some land removal from uh, from felix 
turn number two. He's attacking here for two first. That is uh, Michael playing a second. Mishra's factory attacking for two, so putting Felix on 18. Passing turns. I'm expecting an Ice Storm Stone Rain R Sinkle here from Felix. Let's wait and see what he's going to do. Going through the hand. I would start with the land drop. Okay, there's the land. Oh no, there's a Mox. <laughs> there's the land. Tapping three, there is a Stone Rain taking care of one of the factories. So this is, has to be expected. And if Michael can find another land, at least he can attack with the one Mishra's factory. And there we see another land, Tundra, and a pass. Okay, so he's not going to attack, but possibly worried about facing a Lightning Bolt, which makes sense. There's a Strip Mine taking care of the Tundra, and there's a Regrowth on the Strip Mine and a pass. So this is exactly what Felix wants to do, right? Wants to destroy all the lands. There we see the Strip on the Underground Sea this time. And are we going to see a Hypnotic Spectre? That would have been even better for Felix if he could find Hypnotic Spectre. So Felix really in the driver's seat. Michael has some serious mana issues. And Felix kind of tapping his hand. What can he do? And just a pass turn. So no creature, no pressure from Felix. That's kind of good news for Michael. If he can find a workshop and maybe... Can cast a Suchi or a Juggernaut. He can put some pressure on Felix. But he first needs lands though. Already three lands of his are removed or destroyed, I should say. There we see a workshop. This is the scenario I was talking about. There's a clay statue. Three one from Antiquities, two to regenerate, and a past turn. Let's see if Felix wants to potentially play. Oh, there's a disenchant from Felix. Taking care of the clay statue. There's the Ice Storm taking care of the workshop. Ooh, this is really bad here for Michael. He's just losing everything here. Felix finding all the answers that he needs. He's really in the driver's seat. All that he wants now is a creature to put some pressure on. But he cannot find it. Just passing turn here, giving uh, Michael another opportunity. He is discarding his icy manipulator and passing turn this is really bad for felix there is a central it's a 3-3 because of the swamp there the bayou on the side of felix so he can start dealing some damage michael is uh, just discarding cards though it seems that is very very unfortunate for michael here but this is exactly what felix's deck wants to do there's the attack for three so michael's going to drop to 17 and is he going to play another land removal? Oh, also taking care of the last land here of Michael. That is very grim. And Michael saying, you know what? You've got this one. This is going absolutely nowhere. So that's it. Both players are going to go into their sideboards. And uh, I'm really curious to see what, what both players are going to do. Will, for example, Felix board in the Shatterstorms? I wonder. We'll see that in game number two. Game number two, here we go in the final. So Felix is one game up, Michael on the play, starting with the Tundra and a pass. Ooh, again, that Birds of Paradise. That means that Felix will probably be able to play land removal next turn. That's something that Michael does not want. Okay, there we see a Swords though. Bye-bye, Birdie. So that's going to give Michael a little bit of space. Or are we going to see a Sinkhole here? Yep, there's a Sinkhole. Felix is ruthless with land removal. And uh, I have to say, Felix, your deck is looking super, super strong. Maybe I overestimated the shop stack here, although I like this play by Michael, disenchanting the jet. And a look at that, Felix missing a land drop. Can Michael take advantage? If he can find a workshop here, looks like he wants to. Nope, changing his mind though, untapping again. I thought he was going to play something out. Changing his mind, passing turn. There we see a bad lance and a pass. So Felix has found a land. Remember, if Felix has three lands, he can start destroying some stuff. Or are we going to see another sinkhole taking care of that white source on the side of Michael? And uh, life is really tough for Michael here. I mean, I like the way he started with the swords and disenchant, but now 
missing a land drop. Felix also missing a land. Both players kind of looking for lands. Felix finding it. Are we going to see a stone rain? Ice storm also works. Another land gone. Oh, it's looking bad for Michael again. It does look like, by the way, that Michael is forgetting to add the uh, city damage here that Felix is taking. So he should be on 19, I believe. There's a, uh, a discard by Michael, Michael throwing away his strike. Let's see if Felix has another land removal spell. That would be so deadly. Yes, he does. A stone rain. Oh, man. This is so bad. And, of course, land removal is really good because in this format, there are not a lot of players who play with all the Moxen because playing with the Mox is two points. So if you play with all five Moxen, it's ten points. And that is what makes land removal, of course, a lot better. Uh, you can play, of course, with Felwerstone. There are some options there. We see Setrul here, by the way, uh, being cast by Felix. And let's see what Michael can do. Okay, I like this. Anime Dead coming in from the sideboard. Remember, it does give minus O, uh, sorry, minus one, minus O to a creature. So this is now a 3 4 Triskelion. But I do like this from Michael. He, at least he's managed to get one, one Triskelion on board. If he can find a blue source and some copy artifacts, he could be back into this. And uh, it's understandable here that he's taking the damage. Because if he blocks and Felix has a bolt, then he's going to lose his strike. So Michael dropping to 17, Felix on 19, I believe he should be on 18, but I could be wrong, he's attacking here. Ah, disenchant. So he's gonna drop. There we see a Swords to Plowshares on the Setch Troll. So that means that uh, Felix is gonna go back up again to 19. And I do believe or is the trike removed because he disenchants the anime dead? That could be the case. Anyway, Felix's turn and now saying, you know, you need to add some more uh, points of damage here because I've used the City of Brass a lot. So he's dropping to 17. Let's see what Felix is going to do. Tapping. Taking a damage 16. Oh, there's a recall. What is he going to recall? Looks like he's going to discard a disintegrate and a tsunami. What is he going to get back? Let's have a look. I cannot see that one card. It's kind of unclear to me what he is recalling, but I'm sure we'll find out. Maybe he's saying it verbally, of course. We cannot hear the players talk to each other. Anyway, Felix untapping here again. Michael did find a land. But it's just, Michael's just going too slow. Every, every time he's behind on tempo, again here, sinkhole. This is so bad. Mishra's factory, passing the turn. I'm kind of feeling bad here for Michael, and I, I guess I really overestimated, or underestimated the power of land removal, I guess, and overestimated those workshops. There's an attack for two. So that means Michael's gonna drop to 15. Or does he want to use his strip mine? He is using his strip mine. I'm a little bit surprised here because you would think that lands are so important for Michael. Finding an underground sea, passing the turn. Felix tapping for Tsunami. Oh, this is deadly. This is deadly. Two lands gone with just one card. This is so bad. I'm just hoping, Michael, that you can get back into this. Okay, this is something. Mishra's Workshop and a Chaos Orb. Okay, let the games begin. Let's hope that this can stick, that you can find another land. Ah, oh, Stone Rain. I mean, this is so tough. Against these Ponza decks, you really need a deck with five Moxen. There we see a Setch Troll. And a pass. That's it. Michael saying, you know what? I cannot win this. You've got too much land removal. That means that Felix is the winner of X.16. Congratulations to Felix. And also a big thank you to Michael for playing. Both players, of course, for playing here on Timmy Talks. And a shout out to Luki for organizing the X Points. Now, if you would like to join the X Points League, please check the description below. There you will find a link to their Facebook page. And you can join for free if you want to. So if you like the format, 
go and have a look. They also have their own YouTube channel. You can have a look on that channel. And before you go, I would just like you to do a few things. Please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this match on your socials. All these things are free and really help Timmy Talks move forward. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to old school. Please consider to subscribe and ring that bell. Okay, now that you've done all that, I would like to talk to you about the Timmy Talks Patreon page because yes, we have a Patreon program and there you can uh, join Timmy Talks and you can support the channel financially as well. And if you do, there are some really sweet perks because you get access to our Timmy Talks exclusive Discord. You can join in on all the Timmy Talks tournaments and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll after every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.